Greetings, fellow interlopers. I'm Taylor, and we're talking freighters. We'll take a look at all the current options, as well as some things to keep in mind if you're about to buy your first one. And if you're just starting off, chances are you probably have a lot of questions, and hopefully this video has a lot of answers. To speed things up, I've actually compiled a list of questions that were most often asked. Well, how do you buy one? A lot of units. I've heard that you can get a free one. Is this true? Yes, it is. Can you upgrade your freighter class? No, you cannot. How many types are there? Yeah, how many types are there? A lot. All right, well, I think that's all the questions we have time for, so... Whoa, 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 hang on there. I have one. Okay, one more. Hi, uh, well, first off, love the voice. Say I find a freighter I want on the coordinate exchange. How do I time out the freighter battle so I can get it for free on a new save? That's a great question. Uh, what's your name? Jax. Ah, well, Jax, if you don't mind hanging out at the back end of the video, I'll go through an example of how to tackle that very challenge. Cool? Actually, if you don't mind, I would really appreciate- Okay, yeah, we've got a lot to cover. Uh, thanks for the question, though, Snacks. Well, if you're going shopping for a new freighter, you definitely want to know what's out there, so let's take a look at every model you'll come across. But first, let's get the confusing thing out of the way. A capital ship is a ship that you can land inside, build a base, and so on. What we call a freighter. Now, capital ships have two types, and this is where it gets kind of weird. The first type are normal freighters, which are commonly referred to as system freighters. These come in 12 varieties, which we'll take a look at in a sec. The other type are capital freighters. These are a variant under the generic term of capital ship. Capital freighters come in two varieties, each with subclasses, depending on their size, as well as other cosmetics. The big takeaway with capital freighters is that they will only spawn during freighter battles. The other normal or system class of freighters, those are the ones that are just hanging out in any given system at any given time. These are the ones that will just warp in out of nowhere. Getting back to capital freighters, the first type is the Venator, or Star Destroyer. These bad boys come in three sizes. The first one is a Venator class. This is the smallest of the Venators and are identified by how many indentations they have. As you can see, the Venator class has two. The medium is the Imperial class, which has four indentations. Lastly, the granddaddy of the Venators is the Resurgent class. These beasties boast six indentations. Moving on to the other capital freighter, I give you the Sentinel Freighter. These also come in small, medium, and large. The smallest of the bunch is the Sentinel class. These will have three sets of cargo pods. Next up is the Battleship Sentinel. These will have five sets of cargo pods. And lastly is the king of all Sentinel freighters, the massive Dreadnought. These guys will have seven sets of cargo pods. One quick note about the cargo areas is that they can come as these pods or more of the square boxes. Just another design element to consider. As mentioned before, these will only spawn during freighter battles, which you've probably thought were pretty random events after you come out of a warp, right? Well, these are actually triggered by two conditions in the game. Condition one is that you've been playing at least three hours since your previous freighter battle. This is the actual game time and doesn't count being in menus or pausing the game. The second condition is that within that time, you've warped at least five times. Once both of these are met, a freighter battle will spawn, provided you don't go to an abandoned system. The system has to have a race. With the latest endurance update, the mechanics of these battles have changed a little bit, but not to worry, I've got you covered. So one of two situations will apply to you. The first one is for those who have purchased a freighter on the save you're currently playing on, and you want to swap it out with a new one. The other, well you guessed it, is for those of you who have not bought their first freighter yet. This is actually the most fun situation to be in. Now if you're scared off by the price tag of your average freighter, well cheer up. The first one's on the house! That's right, your first freighter is free, but the next one will most definitely cost you. So getting the right freighter you want for free can be a little tricky, but with a little planning, you can come out with a really sweet deal. Well, like 100% off. So let's talk about the process of getting your first freighter. Once you encounter a freighter battle, 
your prospective freighter will be all the way at the front, so fly up and take a look. A lot of the time it's super dark, so I'll just go into camera mode and then move the sun so I get a good look at it. So it's either going to be one you're interested in or one you want to move on from. If you don't have any interest in this freighter, then just reload your save and you can enter a different freighter battle in another system. If you like the look of these capital freighters, you can actually get one of these in an S-Class, and yes, they can even count as your first freighter, which makes it free. Keep in mind, if this is a brand new save, or you're playing for the first time, the first freighter battle will actually be a system freighter. You're not doing anything wrong, it's just how the game is. But rest assured that all future freighter battles will have a capital freighter. So if you want to hold out for the capital freighter, you can request payment instead. This way, you'll preserve your free one for the next battle. At least these give out some nice rewards now, like a cargo bulkhead to expand your freighter storage, as well as gold and nanites. Once you find a freighter you want, you can fly in at any time and check the class by scanning the bay with your visor. Rinse repeat until you're happy with the class. Now, I'm guessing most of you want either an A or an S, so hold that thought for a sec while I take you through the various styles of system freighters. And then we'll get to how class affects max storage and if it's even worth the grind for an S. So when I was first starting off, I never wanted a system freighter just because they were easy to get. And well, that's what this game does to you. You always want what's hardest to get, right? Ah, human nature. But I think the system freighters are cool options if you're looking to change things up from a typical capital freighter. So these don't need to be in any particular order, but since it's my video, I'm going from least desirable to coolest looking, in my humble opinion. To start off, we have the Cargo Freighter, and it's three varieties. We have the Overbite, the Underbite, and the Cuboid. Cuboids are just variations of the Over and Under, just a little less pronounced. Next up is the blade. We've got the hammerhead here. And here we've got one with the box storage. This one's called the revolver. And then we have the galleon. The centrifuge. The iris. the Enterprise, and last we have the Oculus. Sorry Trekkies, I know you were pulling for the Enterprise to be number one, but I love the Oculus and the unapologetic shout out to the Discovery One from 2001 A Space Odyssey. For you younger travelers, that was the space movie that influenced a generation of space movies nearly a decade prior to Star Wars. And it also had me repeating one of the most iconic lines from that movie time and time again. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Much to the dismay of my friend Dave. Moving on, let's talk about the real difference between classes of the freighters. The biggest differences that most of us probably care about are the storage capacities of each class. So here's a quick rundown of each freighter's maxed out storage capacity. You'll see system freighters here as an example, but know that it would be the same for capital freighters as well. C-class freighters will go 25 main, 7 in their tech, and 24 maxed out in their cargo. B-class will go up to 35 in their main, also 7 in their tech, and 32 in their cargo. A-class freighters have a nice main inventory of 40, with 14 in tech, and 40 in their cargo. Last, but well, definitely not least, are the S-Class freighters. These bad boys are maxed out at 48 in the main, 21 in the tech, and 48 in their cargo. This is massive in my opinion. You not only pick up an extra 16 slots from the A, but you also enjoy 21 tech slots. Remember, you can have all your fleet boosting mods in there, as well as in your main if you want. So that's a potential of six mods you can add to aid your expeditions with speed, efficiency, defenses, mining, exploration, and all that fun stuff. And let's not forget about hyperdrive range. 
Truth be told, I haven't really tried to maximize my hyperdrive on my S-Class freighter, but the range sits just under 5200. So yeah, in my opinion, it's worth it to grind a little for the S-Class. For all the veterans out there who are shaking their heads right now, I don't blame you. I've read a lot of posts from people who have spent many hours reloading and trying to get an S-Class to spawn in a three-star system. That was kind of before all the outlaw systems came around. But I was right there with you, trust me. I don't even want to talk about how long it took me to get my Resurgent Venator in an S-Class. But again, since the Outlaws update, data miners will tell you that Outlaw systems give you the best odds of finding anything in an S-Class. And while I might have been super lucky, while making this video, I've had to find a couple S-Class freighters. I found them all in Outlaw systems with reloads probably numbering between 15 and 30. If this sounds like a lot, trust me when I say this, it isn't. So if you're serious about getting that prized S-Class freighter, make sure and look in Outlaw systems. So let's circle back to that question at the top of the video from Wax. What's the method for going after a specific capital freighter that you saw in a post? You have a new save and this is the one you want, you want it free and you want an S-Class. Jeez dude, greedy much? We know these only spawn at freighter battles, so that much is predictable. So you've got to be between battles to plan this out. If the battle is your very next jump, you'll have to skip that one and wait for the next one. You'll see why in a second. So we have this cool looking Dreadnought class Sentinel Freighter I found on the Reddit coordinate exchange. Shout out to Vanmol82 for the post. It looks like it was posted five days ago and it's in an outlaw system. Perfect. So one of the things I'm sold on is looking only in outlaw systems for my capital freighters. Many think a tier 3 is just as good, but honestly my experience says otherwise. Statistically it's probably not much, but when you're trying to find a needle, you want that haystack to be as small as possible. Plus, as I mentioned earlier, I've had really good luck in outlaw systems when you consider the amount of reloads I've had to do to get an S. So yeah, I'm sticking with outlaw systems. Alright, so we know it's in Euclid and we have the portal code. Honestly, that's all we need. So I'm going to finish putting these glyphs in and I'll see you in the Dreadnought system. Alright, we're here on planet... <laughs> we're here on planet Hobo. This should be the system that our Dreadnought is in. It's always good to verify you put the right address in, by the way. This tip will save you a massive headache if you realize now as opposed to later. So now the idea is to head over to a neighboring system and set a base computer down. I'll just call it pre-jump and then the eventual system we're traveling to, so Hodenpo. And that's pretty much it. You can go back to your normal business, so when you finally hit up a freighter battle, just do a quick reload which will hopefully put you in the previous system, assuming you got out somewhere. From that system, you'll take the teleporter to the base we set up. Now since teleporting doesn't count as warping, we're now only one jump away from our next freighter battle, which, as it so happens, is right next door. And that's it, folks. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Hopefully this guide has been a big help to you guys in deciding which route to go when it comes to buying your first freighter or your fifth. So which ones are you guys targeting? Are you guys tired of your capital freighter and looking to move on to a system freighter? Or is it the other way around? Sound off down below and let me know what your go-to freighter is. It's always fun interacting with you guys down in the comments. And if you enjoy interacting with your fellow travelers, make sure and check out the Whiskey Barrel Gaming Discord. It's a fun place to share coordinates of a cool find, a sweet photo you took, or just reach out and ask for help with anything related to your No Man's Sky universe. Alright guys, it's closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Thanks so much for watching everybody. This is Taylor with Whiskey Barrel Gaming. Have an S-Class day guys.